Hello, Joe here for Guna Tube, and today I've been joined by Aaron, also known as the Crazy Ginger Cabby on Instagram. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, although, yes, I have seen some of his videos, and uh, yes, he is slightly ginger, a uh, bit like myself, although I'd be proud of that bloody beard, I know that. Uh, but uh, yeah, Aaron's joined me today, uh, and you're sitting in your, your London taxi at the moment. Aaron, you are a London taxi driver. That's correct, yeah, sitting in the throne. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and just uh, uh, just uh, yeah, just trying trying to earn a pound note, but obviously because of the, the most recent lockdown, nothing's open. Uh -huh. um, so I'm just sort of poodling about on certain ranks and and obviously talking about the great Arsenal that we both support. <laughs> well, as you call them great or the Arsenal, yeah, that's it. yeah, the Arsenal at the moment, yeah. Well, as you know, uh, yeah. uh, for those people that don't know out there, uh, uh, myself and two of the the other boys here at uh, Guna Tube are also London taxi drivers, although I haven't driven the cab for uh, quite a long while. So we, uh, I'm using you as, your, as the yardstick today, Aaron. You can, you can tell me all about it, but I think you've told me enough information to sort of uh, uh, not necessarily, Put you off wet, of it, yeah. not necessarily wet, get my juices flowing regarding getting back out there, to be honest. But uh, for those no, of you that don't know, and if you if you don't follow uh, Aaron already, uh, Crazy Ginger Cabby, um, I think it's done. I think it's spelled crazy underscore ginger underscore cabby on Instagram. If you don't follow Aaron, go and follow him. He's a very, very funny guy. And uh, we all really enjoy Aaron's uh, content. And I'm sure you will as well. It's very spontaneous, a lot of it. And that's the funny thing about it is it is spontaneous and uh, off the cuff, as you were telling me, Aaron. But uh, let's talk about Arsenal for let's talk about Arsenal for a minute. And uh, if we can. Yeah, don't worry about that. Let's talk about Arsenal if we want to talk about it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I know that you were you were rather reluctant to, uh, to to speak to me about last night. But unfortunately, we have to, you know, as Arsenal supporters, we know we have to take the rough a lot more than we have to take the smooth these days. And the smooth is coming, yeah. possibly, but uh, it's, it's very slow at the moment coming. But you want to say a few things about uh, about the setup and also about um, the, the selection and where players were playing. What, where, where do you want to start? I just I, I think that we need to put need to put things into perspective. It's not it's not going to happen overnight. Everyone's going through it. Well, sorry, the, the teams at the minute, like Liverpool, for instance, have gone through a transitional period, um, and they're reaping the benefits out of it now. Um, like with Arsenal, we, we, the the I don't know, like, like the, the group of players that we had or that we've got, still a majority of them, are very on like a lackadaisical mindset, I think, as a, as a fan. Do you know what I mean? They, they would tell us differently. No, we train hard. We do this. We do that. It's just that the mindset going back to Arsene Wenger, there's still some of those players that are there. They knew the regime. They knew the routine. They knew that certain players in the, in the squad probably knew that if they got back from injury, they'd probably slip straight into the squad. Um, or even like the first 11, which I think is a bit wrong. And I, li I like what Arteta is trying to do. Um, he still has inherited a lot of dross. He's still trying to bring in his own um, mentality, not just his way of playing, but his mentality towards Arsenal Football Club because he's played there. He, he knows what Arsenal mean, you know, and uh, I, I like the fact that he doesn't take any, any shit. Um, I mean, look at Ozil, one of in his time, one of the greatest number 10s you could say there ever was. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a bit fucking far-fetched. He's played with some great players at Real Madrid, but not at Arsenal anyway, but I, I was, he's a good player. He's a, he's a bit of a luxury, but he, he's just like, listen, you're not, in my opinion, I think it's like, you're not pulling your weight. You're not doing what I want you to do. I don't think you can bring to the football team what others can. So, And the same with Gwen Doozy. Like they, a, a few of these, a few of these pricks have got a little bit big for their boots, and he's just giving it. I'm not having it. So we've got to give him time. There's going to be a few transfer windows. Yeah, he's going to get some of his tactics are going to be a little bit wonky in a few games. Do you know what I mean? But like we went to Man United, we win one nil. Everyone's like sucking him off. Oh great, got like superb tactics, counter attack. Da, 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 da. You go into another game trying to do it, and it don't work. Everyone's like trying to rip his head off. Partey ain't worth fucking this. Bella in shit, tea and he's fucking crap. Just calm the fuck down. Just relax. Like, if we can get, like I said at the beginning of the season, if we can go on a few decent cup runs, go far in the Europa League, get back into the Champions League and try and get that Champions League money in that pool and get some even better players, because we are the Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? We're, let's not get it twisted. We still are a very attractable club. 
So the dross you're so, talking about, the dross you're talking about, who, who, who can you name names or would you rather just keep that to yourself? I, the dross it is like, I mean, I know he hasn't like played much, but Mustafi, he's still in the club. I don't rate Bellerin. Sorry, but I just think a, a few injuries have caught up with him. He's being coached, I think, a little bit differently because if you watch him in all the games under Arteta now, he's trying to come in field a little bit and get involved in the play a little bit more to open up Pepe to go down the right and attack down the right-hand side. Pepe, what the, he's like a fucking shit Jovino. <laughs> what the fuck? We're just trying to spunk 72 million on him. Like, what is, like, he's not bulked up. What's he done in the summer? He's done fuck all. Uh, Bami Yang, he's not the dross. He's, he's, he's the cream of the crop. But, signs his contract, and I don't want to get into that conspiracy theorist stuff. Do you know what I mean? But, like, where's the drive? Where's the impetus? All right, bang him down the middle. Fuck Lacazette off on the sidelines for a couple of games and put a Bamiyang down the middle. Like, stop pandering to a few of these players. People rave about Saka. He is ne- he's never been Arsenal quality. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. A few good games, and it's like, oh, we need to give him what he wants. Like, fucking Hudson the Doy at Chelsea. Had a couple of good games. Oh, we got to fuck. They got to give him 150 grand a week. What are you talking about? It's fucking non. It does my head in. Modern day football. I spoke to you like on the phone before. It does my fucking brain in. Like I just think the players are so out of tune with reality. They don't really deep down. They don't really get what it means to play for Arsenal. Some do, but I, I just don't think deep down that they do. But Arteta, as I was saying, is trying to bring that back into the squad, you know, and he's just trying to bring in his players into to play under him and get under his mentality of the way of playing. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'm rambling fucking on here, but it's just, it's so annoying because we go and beat Man United and we get back, not, not even lose to Villa. We get fucking battered by Villa. That's, that's utter bollocks. What's the point in beating Man United? And I'm getting ready. I can feel myself getting. No, I was just, I was just about to say. No, no, no. You, you. When I, when I text you and um, and said like you, you're ready to do something, and you actually, you actually uh, said to me, you don't know if you could because because of the way you were feeling. And uh, I mean, even Kaya had to wait sort of, you know, twelve, fourteen <laughs> hours because he was raging last night, and uh, he'd had a couple of yeah. beers and 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 obviously wanted to. He said that I couldn't have done it last night because there would have just been too many expletives and. Uh, and uh, it's, you know, one, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? Go and take, go and take the dog for a walk. Oh, I ain't got a dog, but all right, go and find the dog and go and take it. For go a find walk. a dog and just take it for a walk. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, you know, I was, I was sitting there with my brother and my dad last night, and we were just sitting there with our mouths open. And I actually said to to H, um, uh, about the fact that you know it, it could have been a lot if they'd have scored early, if that goal had been allowed, you know, in the first half, yeah. which I think probably was actually a goal and, and you know, you know, it's a bit of a silly rule. Uh, yeah. but it, they could have had an atful like they did against Liverpool. And and I think we were Absolutely. very, very lucky to get away with only three because I, I, if it had been a little bit earlier in the game, it could have been four, five and six because they were the, the, do you know, rampant. Do you, know, do you know what? Sorry to interrupt, Joe, but like it's you'll get the liberal Arsenal fan. I, I call it the modern day fan will be like, well, they bash Liverpool. I don't give a fuck. That's a one-off. That's not going to happen to Liverpool again this season. But yeah. it does. I mean, fuck me. But you're at home. You're supposed you're supposed to push on now, get onto a bit of a winning run here. Like, you, you beat Man United. It wasn't the prettiest. But fuck it. You, you march on. If you want to be finishing in the elusive fucking top four positions, you cannot be losing, even fucking drawing at, at, to, to teams like Aston Villa at home, let alone away, but at home, like you can't, you can't be doing, we've, we, we are earning absolutely no right whatsoever. We're not grinding out results here. And it, some of the games that we've won, look at the West Ham game. We were shit against West Ham. We were lucky to come out of that with a win. Do you know what I mean? Like we, we've been pretty lucky. I mean, the only game we've played, I think, are, Decent, or, or even Fulham. Yeah. Fulham, like first game of the season, Parker, easy win. I mean, Fulham is shit. But other than that, I mean, we, we haven't, we have not played teams off the park continuously for like a good, a, like a solid game, even a like a, a fucking solid half. So what, what so what, it's always old. So what you're thinking about, like the, the, the fact that you're, you're, you're willing to, to allow Arte at that time to make that transition and like the clock, like Klopp did at Liverpool. Yeah, uh, listen, we're, we're, the, thing, the difference between sort of like like Arsenal and like, let's say, Chelsea. 
Chelsea have got the money behind them and the clout and the owner that their their structure at their football club over the years has been two, three years, win a major trophy, fuck them off. Doesn't matter what you win, you're off. Was it Ancelotti won a double on your trot? Yeah. Arsenal, we don't have that at Arsenal. Morally, that's not how we run anyway. We know fucking what the Cronkies is all about. They, 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 they see this as like a franchise to get more money to push their American sports franchises a little bit further over there. Look at the fucking stadium they just built over yeah. in LA. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, and it's, um, obviously, get without getting too conspiracy theorist here again. I just think like with Arteta, he give him time. We are a club that, that doesn't necessarily give time. I think Arteta was probably the first person that they wanted to give the job to before Emery. I think like, uh, before that, maybe Arteta weren't ready. Um, and, and then obviously it just transpires that we now got Arteta in spookily. It's not like we've gone after someone else, like another young uh, a young manager or anything like that. Yeah. Um, so you've got to give, uh, listen, you, you're giving Arteta money to spend as well. Let him spend it on his players. Then when January comes around and farming out players on loan and whatnot, fucking get rid of them. Come next year, Ozil, the toxic environment that he brings to the club and the, and the fucking... It's his PR team that go on his social media. Ozil probably okays it off sort of thing because he don't give a fuck. Yeah. But his PR team talking about paying the Gunnosaurus his wage and going fucking going on Twitter and spreading X, Y and Z. Like, grow up, you fucking twat. Because you're going to get young players at Arsenal that are going to look up to that and look at Meza Ozil, look at what he's won, look at who he's played with and being like, fucking hell, like, well, Ozil's doing it. He ain't even playing. He don't care. Yeah. Like it sets it sets a bad example. Get these pieces of shit out of the football club. Look at Gwen Dude, you ain't had a sniff. All right, I'll tell him might prove me wrong because he, he was bringing Xhaka back. Xhaka was doing all right. But deep down, I don't think he's going to play too much with Partey being in there. And we obviously got the Egyptian Pirlo now. But up against <laughs> fucking Aston Pierre. Villa, he's dog shit, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, there's a lot of trust in there. I think, I think it's the mentality of a lot of football players. It's not like they're, they're bad football players. It's just that it's their mentality towards games and being up for it. We start games far too fucking slow. But do you not think we set up? Do you not think we set up like almost like an away side last night? A bit defensively, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, but even not, not even just last night. It, it's like when we talking to me, mate, Bo. It's we go into games, even oh, I, get, I know it's Liverpool and Man City, but we go into these games with like a bit of a negative defensive mindset. Just fuck, just go and attack them. Yeah, because they're anticipating that you're gonna sit back. Just. Like, are, are, is it? Do we lack the creativity in the midfield to hold on to the ball? We haven't really got like a Santi Cazorla in there, have we? No. All right, we've got we've got El Nene and Partey. They're, they're engines. They're good. They get around the pitch a bit, intercept well. Partey can play a bit, but then going into that that number ten role and then making things happen and and create magical passes or like intricate balls like Burke and Ozil when Ozil used to play. We haven't got that, and I think I think we do. Ultimately, we, we, we missed that. We haven't got that creativity. But then, still doesn't mean we can't attack teams. Just fucking gamble. Just all pile in, pile forward. Mm. I do I do like the, the addition of Gabriel at the back. I know, we, as I said, we got fucking got hammered out last night. But I do Can you imagine life long without long. him at the moment? Like, can you imagine what it would be like without Gabriel? I mean, we, we would have had Louise next to holding last night. Uh, and and Tierney, who, who, you know, I agree with Kyra in that he's playing him on the left, left side of centre half when he should be out, you know, he should be doing lots more overlapping runs because that's what I, he I, does. I think, I, I think, but I think with that, I think it's the personnel that Arteta has under him. He doesn't trust other players. He probably sees something in Tierney that defensively is really solid amongst the others. He thinks he's better. But going forward, you got, I mean, Saka, all he just gets the ball. He don't attack anyone. He goes inside, like when Justin Hoyt used to play for us. Like, it would go over the halfway line and play it inside. Hmm. Go and attack your fucking fullback. Tierney, if you what used to watch him for fucking Celtic, ball to his feet, head down, little jink, fucking down the line, and he'd whip it in. All right, we haven't got Oliver Giroud in there to get on the end of fucking crosses. But at least you're, at least you're stretching the defence and you're opening it up. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. Saka... 
all they're fucking right about has got to do is just like, all right, well, I'll just fucking face you inside. You ain't going to go down the outside because you fuck can't be bothered, you <laughs> Excuse my language. It's just back inside. Excuse my language. I do apologise. E- edit that out. <laughs> but see, I'm getting agitated with it because I just, I, like, no one, no one's got any, any, I don't know, is it, is it confidence? I don't know. Is it the way we play? Is Arteta saying, no, you don't go down the outside, come inside and, and make space for each other. That's why, hence why Bellerin, Moves on the inside and gets involved in the play from a right wing back position. Do you know what I mean? I just yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of width, and the width we do have is is, is fucking toilet at the minute. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's hope. Uh, let, let's hope. Like you know, you, you're saying about the, the, the transitional side of things and, and the fact that that um, you know things have to change and they are going to change under Arteta. Let's hope that because um, his record's not much better than what Emery's was if, if in fact it's probably worse at the moment in in the same at the same yeah. time um but it's a funny old league and it, it's proving that with who's at the top uh, uh yeah. you know yeah, so yeah. so so we have to look at things and go okay so everybody's uh everybody's struggling a little bit and everybody's having funny wins and and you know there's some strange results uh yeah. i don't know if you know this at that day when uh spurs beat man united 6-1 and and uh i think it was villa beat liverpool was it 7-2 was it um, yeah, like I, that, yeah. I think if you'd have had 10 quid on that, you'd have won a quarter of a million pound. Uh, you know, but, but yeah, you to... some, yeah, like you said, some, some of the results that have gone on um, this, this, this past or, or this, this season, you'd think like, nah, nah, nah. What, Villa going to bash um, Liverpool 7-2 and then beat Arsenal away 3-0? Yeah. People would be like, nah, you're all right. Yeah. yeah and, but li- li- this is the opportunity. I said it to you before on the phone, I think. I, I said it to me, mate, Bo. Because the the injuries that certain teams have, like Liverpool with Van Dijk and stuff like that, teams now could get on a little bit of a run, get four or five wins under their belt and pull away. Because no one wants to. People are losing silly games. Yeah. Like look at us. We ain't. We uh, we haven't drawn, have we? One four no. lost four. Yeah. See, like yeah. Even, I don't know. Even changing three of those losses to a draw, it's an extra. It's an extra three points. I mean, I, I don't know. I just. <laughs> It just get it's so annoying because you beat Man United, you think fucking yeah, we're on, we're on it here. Partey's come in, he's just fucking run the whole of Old Trafford. But then you get these pillocks that are saying, "Oh, he's the new Patrick Vieira." It's one game, you fucking raging pillocks. Yep, one game. Relax. Let see him out through the season. See how he gets on. Then judge him. Well, let's see. Uh, yeah, let, let's see. Let's see what happens. I mean, you know, it, it's it's early doors. We've played uh, eight games, one four loss for you know. We're sitting in eleven. Still position. very early. Yeah, yeah. Still yeah. very early. Minus one uh, uh, goal difference, which isn't great, but uh, uh, you know, I, I think what you're saying is Who right. Who would have thought I, that about Arsenal, eh? No, honestly, no one would have thought it about Arsenal. But uh, you know, transition is transition is transition, I guess. But uh, listen, uh, yeah. hopefully, uh, hopefully next time I catch you um, after yeah. the international break, or maybe before, if we do something sp- in, in particular, and we, and we bring you back for that, if you want to come back for it. But uh, we, we, yeah, you know, sure we'll, um, we'll we'll talk, and hopefully, we'll be in a slightly better position after Leeds away, right? So Leeds are another team. Like my, uh, I've got a pal of mine that fucking raves about Bielsa. Like he. Loves him. West Ham fan loves Bielsa. Um, and I said to him this season, it's coming back to bite me in the ass. I said, Leeds will not draw many this season because they'll either get hammered, which they are, or they'll play teams off the park, which they do. Um, so uh, Arsenal Leeds might end up being five all. Yeah, it could well be. Although I don't know, we're not scoring many goals at the moment, Aaron. So, so, uh, so you know, we'll, oh, we'll, try... we'll lose four one. Oh, can't buy any goals at the moment. It seems, you know. But uh, listen, yeah. thanks for thanks for joining me. We could go on, and um, uh, there'll be plenty of other Absolutely. opportunities. And uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully next time we'll have a few. We'll have smiles on our faces rather than this uh, this uh, red raging redness going on. And I don't just mean your beard and my my poor excuse for a bit of. Ginger stubble <laughs> with a little bit of a little bit of salt and pepper running through it because of my age. But uh, there yeah, you go. Absolutely. And and and, uh, and you got air to die for, you know. Bloody hell! What, what, where, did it, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> yeah, my mum my mum shat me my mum shat me out with some good jeans. I think on the hair department, but my old man didn't give me any Corey, so I'm a bit pissed <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay, well I'm I'm saying nothing to that. We could go on on that, on that bombshell. Thanks very much, Aaron. Thanks for joining me, mate. And uh, we look forward to the next okay. one. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Joe. Thank you. Thank you.